Hey guys, it's your girl, Miss Patu Loka. So I'm so thrilled and excited to share yet another video. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. And please feel free to like, share, comment, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you're notified any and every time I drop a video. So let's get started. Hi friends, my name is Rich Velotis. I'm the lead pastor of New Life Fellowship Church in Queens, New York City, and the author of Good and Beautiful and Kind. The verse of the day is found in Psalm 34, verse 19. This is what it says. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. This verse has only 15 words, but there's so much that we can learn from it. And the first thing that we need to see is that it says the righteous have many troubles troubles. This is one of the simple but important things we need to pay attention to in the Bible as we seek to have a relationship with God because there's lots of clarity in this statement. Notice that it doesn't say that the wicked have many troubles. We wish it said that, but it says the righteous have many troubles. And so being righteous being upright in character, being people of integrity, it doesn't protect us from troubles. We experience troubles because we live in a sinful, broken, a fallen world. And yet I think we can be surprised by the troubles that come our way. We tend to think if we just prayed the right prayers, went to church enough, read enough scriptures, that we won't struggle, that we won't suffer, that we won't experience any bad things. But life tells a different story. And so what do we need to take away from this? First of all, simply that trouble happens. It doesn't mean you've done something wrong. It doesn't mean you have to live in condemnation. Not at all. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. This is the normal experience of being human. And so we shouldn't be surprised, but we should be comforted. Because this verse says, the righteous have the Lord and the righteous will be delivered from all these troubles. Notice the promise at the end of this verse, the Lord delivers. And I want you to hear that today. And let me encourage you with this. No matter what you are facing today, no matter what your struggles, no matter what your problems, God knows how to deliver. And that's the most important thing that we need to take away from this verse. We will have troubles, but the Lord knows how to deliver. Amen. If you have yet to download the YouVersion Bible app, it is a free app as well as the Abide app. It's a great and amazing meditation app for Christians. The scripture of the day is Psalms 34 verse 19 where it says, The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. How can you respond to your troubles? It says, I can ask God for peace. We have the second one where it says, I can thank God because I know he is with me. And then three, I can trust that God is in control. But I'm going to also say that we should also ask God to give us a moment of great expectation, expectancy. Because I know that there are times when I'm going through things that I go through and I'm like, goodness gracious, like Lord. And then I'm brought back to this verse of Matthew 18, verse three to four, where it says, and truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of of heaven. What that verse is basically saying is that we need to become more childlike. The beauty about being a child is that we're like a sponge. We're just so wide open wanting to learn and see things and we're so eager and wanting to follow Jesus and want to see what what he has in store for us, what he's going to tell us. And when he makes a promise, we don't sit there twiddling our thumbs like, yay, hey, when is going to happen? When we know that a parent or a grown up is very consistent, we don't even bother them because we know they're consistent and they are a person of their word. And so since God is consistent, he's a man of his word. We know that when he makes a promise to us and every single blessing that he has in store for us, every gift that he has in store for us that is written in his word from Genesis to Revelation is then added unto us when we follow him and have our reverence and love for him. 
let us continue i'm gonna say a piece because when we stay in a peaceful mindset it's easy for us to not lose track of who he is and so today's devotional is hallelujah even here the five-day devotional by linda laird inspired by the song right now i feel a little overwhelmed right now i could really use some help right now i don't feel like it is well with my soul we've all been there before that dark lonely place where the pain feels unbearable and your mind is filled with confusion and question marks you get a call from the doctor with news that will change life as you know it you give your heart away only to have it broken you lose a child or a loved one depression has it's gripped so tight around your heart that even taking the next breath is exhausting. You fail those who trust you, and now you carry the shame with you every day. He cheated, she betrayed you, you lost your job, etc. The list could go on and on. Maybe you're walking in a season like this right now and you're scrambling to find some kind of peace in the midst of the storm. I've been there. And while I'm not about to promise you a quick fix to your problems or to tell you to say this many Hail Marys and will happen, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. We have a God who is near to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit and who promises that even in the darkest valley, he will be right by your side to comfort and guide us. By the end of this devotional, my hope is that your heart will be encouraged to trust just a little bit more in the faithfulness and love of the God we serve. In the meantime, as you face whatever you are having to face today, let me leave you with this simple truth. Peace is not always a feeling but it is a knowing. It's knowing that even if we don't understand the whys behind what we're going through right now, we do know that the God who holds the universe in his hands is good. He loves us. He's in control. He has promised never to leave you or forsake you. If you have nothing else to hold on to for hope today, hold on to that. He is by your side and he cares with you and loves you, Linda. I can honestly say I've been through so much like so many of you. The love of God has strengthened me in, in such a way that nothing can compare. I promise you that though in these trials and tribulations, they can be extremely tough. And there are times when you just don't feel like getting into your Bible or getting into your devotional. I promise you I have those moments. But my best remedy has always been to just turn on one of my favorite worship songs. Maybe Kirk Franklin, maybe Tasha Cobbs, maybe whoever. I even have a playlist on my channel, which I will link in the description box down below. Just sing your heart out. Sing your pain out. Sing your victory out. Sing them all out. I tell you, last year was one of the most trying, hardest years I've had in a very, very long time. And I remember that before I relocated last year, I told myself and I made a promise to God that no matter what happens, I want to always make you my first response. And no matter what, whether it's getting into my devotional singing or whatever, God, make me consistent. Make me equally yoked to you in such a way that I've never been equally yoked before in my entire existence. Bring a hunger, bring a hunger of need, create in me a place where you are my fortress, you are my strength, you are my refuge, you are my hope. That's all that I want in Jesus' mighty name. Last year, I mean, I found myself having this exuberant amount of energy, hope, and love and reverence for God in such a way that it burnt so deep within me that it glowed 
beyond me that even people thought, hey, she must be in a new relationship or she must so uh, all these things. But it's like, no, it's my relationship with God. Fasting comes a long way. I promise you, if you want to hear from God, all you have to do is give up something. Pray and ask God to reveal to you the very thing that you put before him that takes the place of where he belongs and where he should be. And when you do that and you fast for as long as you have to, that time you would spend scrolling through your phone or watching Netflix or binge watching whatever it is, any time, whatever it is, replace it with a devotional, something that you know that God is calling you to change. Maybe from changing you from gossiping or changing you from your anger issues or changing you from whatever it is. Part of what gave me that fulfillment was that I realized that I never made God my first response in the way that I should have. Even when I had doubts, even when I, I just wasn't sure. I kept moving forward and I thank them for every step that I took. I thank them for every song that I sang that I didn't feel like it. I thank them for every verse that I read that I just didn't feel like it. And I thank them for the strength that I had to crucify everything that came against me that was trying to come against the very thing that God has created within me to make it good. And I also pray that God continue to make you into a person that is a clay. Because when we live a life of a clay, it is not only healing, it places us in a place of gratitude because we start to understand that if we're the clay, then God is the potter, which he is, and that he's going to mold and stretch us out and do whatever he wants so that his will can be done and that he will get the glory. And the beauty about him getting the glory is that God is gonna do whatever he has to to make sure that everything that is meant for us in his plan for us and him revealing our identity for us, through us, by his power, his gift, singing and speaking over us, because only God can turn nothing into something. Do not allow the enemy to trick you into believing that you're nothing and what you're going through is for nothing and how you're feeling is nothing. Trust and believe in God. Have a moment where every night and every time you go through opposition or through issue, remember you cannot have a testimony without being tested. There are moments, even in those hard moments, I start to find myself being built up with excitement, feeling like, God, you've got me out of it through this, that, and that situation. I am here willing and able, and I am going to pray, and I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing with joy and expectations, knowing you're going to pull through. You're the God that has overcome everything. And you are the God that, despite everything I'm going to go through in my life, it is by your divine authority that everything that I'm going to face and everything I'm going to learn is by your will so that I can be stretched and set apart as a woman, as your child, as a sister, as a daughter, as a, as a wife, as a mother, as a prayer warrior, as all the different ways that God utilizes us. So though I know it is hard, I promise you, if you hold on to God, if you're holding on to dear life, like the things that you used to hold on to, that you used to put in the place of God, I promise you when you come on to the other side, not only does God magnifies everything, you see that it was definitely God that carried you through and that he is the same God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let us get into a prayer, a prayer for God's guidance. Let us bow our heads. God, I know that in this world I will have many troubles, but I also know that you are with me. I am grateful that I can trust you to guide and protect me as I go through hard circumstances. Please give me peace and a peace beyond understanding and a peace mixed with joy and a peace that is solidified in you as I make you my fortress, I make you my strength. 
and allow me to rest with the promise and the peace you've made throughout every season. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. As I've always said, whether it's my videos or videos of children of God, when you're sharing them, you're not just sharing a regular video, you're sharing the living, breathing Word of God. It is active, it is alive, and it is here for the taking. So I strongly suggest you grab them with both hands and never let go. This is Mrs. Patuloka saying God bless, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.